Um, I do have a, a written report. Um, it's out on the table on um, my book, one up. Um, and um, I will be, this is town meeting week, we're, all, we're, all, we're home this week, so um, I will be available all week if you have any questions for me. And I think that the town meeting will also Well, you need to Beautiful compromise. 
not a split the difference compromise, not a meet in the middle compromise, but a compromise of recognizing both imperatives. And um, from the get-go, there were people who thought, well, this is confining my activities, so it must be unconstitutional. It must be a violation of freedom. The fact is, we've been defending Act 250 for 50 years. Uh, I was very worried that this time uh, we were going to take a big hit. I think the reform that is coming down is, makes, makes sense. Basically. Uh, but that's why there's two houses. The, that House work has now come to the Senate. I'm no longer on the Health and Wealth, on the uh, uh, Natural Resources Committee. But uh, we will make sure that all the details. I, I have reservations about uh, any Act 250 exemptions. Uh, and the downtown exemption worries me. I would rather that what that downtowns have the ability to get what's called an umbrella permit, which we already do for industrial parks, where you already you start with an Act 250 permit for the whole area. And then rather than any development in downtown having to get an Act 250 permit, they just have to get an and years ago, I chaired the District 3 Commission. I can tell you, amendments were often handled on the phone. The, uh, the administrator would call me as chair. And we'd talk about it. i say, yeah, I don't think we'll just run it by the rest of the commission. But I think we just, and he's, he'd mail it. He used mail in those days. He would mail me the permit, and I'd sign it. So uh, because I, we do want to make it easy to develop downtown and more uh, stricter regulation. The countryside. Um, I mentioned earlier, we, I'm glad that our Commissioner of Health thinks scientifically. So too with global warming. I think the scientific debate ended decades ago. There was a political debate about the science, which I think now finally is over. Where I, I have not heard anyone say to me they don't believe, they don't believe in man-made global warming. It's been about you know a year since I've heard someone on the earth say that. But we do have what I call denial of light, which is sort of saying, yes, it's a problem, yes, we have to do something, but, and the big but is don't do anything that costs any money or inconveniences anybody. And uh, we're coming up on the 75th anniversary of the end of World War II, and the finest generation. And I wonder what would have happened if in January of 1942, right after Pearl Harbor, if the American people had the attitude that a lot of folks seem to have about global warming. But they just said, well, I'm all for winning this war, but you can't raise your sugar. What are you crazy? That's extreme. Um, we may have to do some things that even need us. And we may have to do some things that cost money. But the other thing is a lot of what we can do about global warming will save money, will make money. So it's not a matter of, I would hope that the choice is short term, bottom line, of our environment, I would opt for the environment. But that's not the choice we have to make. I think the fact is that it's uh, taking serious steps, science based steps about global warming. Uh, they, uh, it's an economic mixed bag. Some things will inconvenience people. Some things will actually make life easier and cheaper. I think no one has ever complained that a speech I gave was too short. So, <laughs> so I'll, I'll knock off here. But of course, trying to be brief means there's a lot of stuff that hasn't been even studied to touch on. So I will hang around uh, in the back for a, a little while, at least before I head up the back of the boat. And uh, again, since I'm here, thank you so much over the years for uh, electing me and the other I do appreciate it. Thank you.
proposed two steps proposed budget recommended seven hundred thirty seven thousand seven sixty one. Article six. Will the town vote to authorize the board of selectmen to borrow money in anticipation of taxes? Article seven. Will the town vote to charge penalty interest for late payment on both the first and second installments due for property taxes? And Article 8, to do any other necessary and proper business throughout the course that may go to And that's signed by the Director of Select Board to be an advocate for the OJM and Mark Thank you. Great job. Okay, first order of business is to look at the moderator. Which one of you uh, <coughs> wants to take over? Mark loves doing this. <laughs> <laughs> Here. I know. Hey,
Move nomination to be closed. Second. Motion is made and seconded. We close the nomination. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed? Thank you. It was an honor. So you mean we get to climb all the Langley Cemetery again? You got out of it last year. <laughs> yeah, but I had to go and clean up. Basically, on call 
Outside the right of way now, uh, by quite a distance, um, I don't think there'd be any stopping it really. They need to come up with a different plan, I really think. Uh, yeah, especially on these miles, right out in the There's a little spot full. 100 feet out of the right of way. That's right out in the I think it'd be a good idea if David would not pull all those things up by hand. It doesn't even work. No. Round up, round up barely kills it. Oh, that's what you're sure you don't have an idea. It's a small job secure. I'm going to retire.
had a guest speaker here last summer um, that was a professional, that's what he does. And um, Lori was at the meeting, and this gentleman, as crazy as he was, he seemed to have a lot of knowledge about exactly what to do, when to do it, and how to do it. So I can get that name if you guys want to talk with him. He, work, he does a lot of work for a lot of other towns. I think he said he worked for Norwich and Woodstock and Palm Fret and yeah, so and down south and he um, he did know exactly when to cut it and he said how to get rid of it. There has to be community burn piles where people can take you know their own weeds and burn it. And um, he he seems like he would have the answers. It'd be worth talking to him. Yes. The big problem with ooh, the big problem with chervil is that we can mow it down before it goes to seed, but the roots are still in the back, it's just gonna grow back and head up again. So, you know, you can mow it down ten times. Because the roots are still there, it's just gonna come back. So I mean it's one way to slow it down, but it's not going to solve the problem. It needs to be pulled out. Yeah. So you're certainly not gonna get rid of it, but you're gonna have to really help. Well, you can. Slow it down by not dragging it up and down the street through the mall. I mean, it would be a strategic move. Awesome. Um, Jim Lennon mows my lawn and he, he waxes my bank around the flowers, and, and it has really, two, three years of doing that, has really thinned out what comes back between, between mowings. And anybody who's been by my house knows that we don't mow every week. I mow when it gets too tall. Um, so it has a chance to get back. Um, the only problem I have, is, I have is the stuff that's in the middle of the, the, the flowers. So it, it, mowing, does, mowing does help significantly because they don't have the leaves to draw the nutrients down into the roots. I just had a question about the process where um, at the middle of here, are we making an advisement to the select board to increase the budget to allow for these uh, recommendations, or are we just saying these are recommendations and it doesn't necessarily have to change the budget? At the moment, we're just discussing the budget. Okay. But what are our options for these two items that we're saying might require more money for the town? If you decide that if you want, if this meeting discussion and decide you want to have a second call, then you would have to make a motion on the floor about the proposed budget by the nominee for the cost to have a second call. You'd have to change the budget after the meeting. Correct. The highway thing I see that is next year. Okay. Unless you guys think that. But we don't have another time. I will speak to it. Just my personal opinion that um, the highway department of this town does an unbelievable job. It is a small town that is spread out, and I, even though I'm on a state maintained road, it's very much valued the idea that I can get around from point A to point B, and I don't like the idea of driving our employees and citizens into the ground and being overworked. So I very much support uh, authorizing some money to start looking for a third highway person. Thanks. Can we hear from Dave? Do you feel that you would like a third person? Well, huh. a lot of times it would really be kind of nice to have a third person, uh, especially when it takes uh, about four hours to complete your route. And actually, if it was snowing an inch or two an hour, by the time you go four hours, you're going to have another seven or eight inches of snow in the road uh, where you just uh, was three hours ago. So, you know, there's a lot of times when it would really be nice to have a third truck going uh, to help keep up with the situation. But would need another truck? Well, the other thing that would help, too, is once we have the application, you'd have that guy going in, because there's a lot of stuff that they do that we really want two guys. I mean, someone's running a chainsaw, it's possible you want to have a second guy with you. And I appreciate that point because if there was an accident, that would affect the town's bottom line too, obviously. The insurance and whatnot. What about the equipment? Do we have that mean another 
chuck. Not mine. Personally, I'd like to see, before we add more money to the budget this year, we don't really know what a third person's going to cost. You've got payroll and taxes. I'd like to see it, some thought given to it this year, and then a number can come back next year as to this is what we're looking at and expenses to add that third person. That's what we're looking for. We, we feel as a board that it is getting time to put a third person on one call down the belt. And we would certainly do some more research and try to come up with some numbers. Bill? I support Donna, and I think the select board is saying that uh, they're not asking for more money this year. They're trying to get us a sense from the community of whether the human resources with a higher division makes sense. And I think the response to it, there is. Uh, we used to have a third person. Uh, that person was cut to overtime and then was eliminated. Uh, we've had a pretty much flat budget for years. Um, but the fact of the matter is two people can't do it all. And one of the two peoples is our highway superintendent. So when he's out in his truck, is he, can he be planning, organizing, going after grants, doing all the things that are almost impossible? And when you look at our budget this year and last year, Dave Brown has brought in tens of thousands of dollars, tens of thousands of dollars in grants. Now, he's not doing that when he's plowing or he's working in a call or he's cleaning a dish or something like that. He needs time. And you can't ask a highway superintendent to walk on the water every single year. So one benefit we have in expanding and getting back to that third person is allows our superintendent to spend that extra time in planning, organizing, thinking, um, and getting the money and resources to get the job done. And I'd like to, um, the, another thing about highway department I mentioned, um, we can't do it by labor alone. Some communities, they put all the money in people and not enough in materials. Uh, we need both the good equipment, well-maintained, and the materials so we keep up our infrastructure. This town has that balance. I agree now that the human resources needs to be reset, and I commend the select board um, for pointing that out and, and moving in that direction. There are a couple small items that I'd just like to highlight that are really nice in the budget, small numbers. Um, one is $1,000 to uh, being proposed to uh, improve and upgrade the town's website. Um, there's so many opportunities that we have in our community um, that we could, if we had a place to go, go, oh yeah, that's, that's happening. Oh, I didn't know that was here. Oh, uh, I didn't know that uh, event uh, I could attend to. So having a, a more robust website can help not only us, but also visitors. And they, why? What about Stockbridge? Well, you go to your website to find out you've got Ted Green's Forge, you've got um, you, you get employment opportunities, you got restaurants. So uh, it can help us uh, grow as a community and just help with the communication process. So much of what we do here as town meetings, we learn because we're listening and we can hear. And, uh, one role of that website is that we go to the website and exchange information so we all are in tune and up to date. Also, there's a small budget item for $4,500 to upgrade the, the computer system. Um, what about a strong computer infrastructure, um, we're, we're standing still. So those sort of initiatives are really important. I commend the select board and, and Isaacs and the really re-elected um, select person for the initiative on, and this is a small item in the last year's budget, like $3,000, to give economic development support. Um, we need to grow, we need to get businesses um, and people here um, that we're going to grow and develop as, as a community. And, and as a result of that, and the assistance of that opportunity, Stockbridge is now, and it's written up in the Stockbridge report, is teaming up with other towns in the whole valley um, to initiate and, and, and move ahead in economic development. So all those things are important, and going back to helping with additional highway support, you can't do everything you're doing 100% of your time you're doing, you can't be thinking and organizing and planning. So we need to, uh, from time to time, expand our resources so that we can do that well. Thank you. Are there any other questions, comments on the uh, recommended budget? So we, we, I think we all have had a conversation about the, 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 the 
I would be going forward. Um, as far as the the the, 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 the chernobyl mowing goes, is that is that a recommendation that the the the, the select board is looking for for us to up the budget by eight thousand dollars to do an additional mow? Is that something you think would be prudent or? Well, my feeling is that I think we should do a little more research. <coughs> I mean, I would think it would be more mowing early because if there's statistics, statistics out there that say we should mow at the end of the summer and knock it down, then we should figure out which one the second mow is going to be to best serve. Which hand? Because frankly, I don't think it's enough. I know Joanne brought up this bill that spoke on it. Uh, yeah, maybe I'll pay to the left guy. Maybe he has the knowledge to you know, make a recommendation on how to do it, when to do it. I'll, I'll do it. Well, it, sounds, it sounds like uh, you guys are, are leaning towards some sort of a study. Well, I guess I, I'd like to know, um, you know, if we were to increase the budget eight grand for a second moment, I, I mean, I'm of the opinion that it would help. I used to try and keep it out of Stony Brook, but that was a that was a demented request. Uh, but I, I do hear um, the comment about you know knocking it back. It's definitely going to slow down. You're going to do something before it really takes over. <laughs> I just believe we have to do something before it gets worse. And I know it's, it's, a, it's a futile job, but I think we do need to add to the budget for a certain amount to cover another mowing and research. And maybe if we have to have this guy come in and talk, and I don't know how much he charges, but, um, you know, add that into this budget because it's, it's taking over every place. Thank you. Yes, is this a good time to talk about uh, an update from Dave on the Gazeville Bridge? <laughs> <laughs> it's so sketchy. <laughs> I just wondered if there was any update or um, any information that we could I don't have. know if the select board wants to share anything. I suppose we've got other business and we can stick on this one topic. Okay. Okay. I just had one short little blurb I was actually going to read and it's actually new information that the, the board uh, doesn't really, has, hasn't heard yet either. Uh, but it's uh, re regarding the um, structural strength of the, of the deck uh, and the hole that's in it right now. Uh, pretty much, uh, it's just a cosmetic problem and it has nothing to do with the structural strength of the deck itself. Um, Basically, they, uh, I heard yesterday to just go ahead and patch the holes, whether uh, Luke and I do it or um, you hire somebody in there and, and pay big bucks to, to do it. But um, there's so many cross, uh, cross uh, uh, pieces in there that um, is for the structural strength of the deck, that basically the deck itself and the cement is just for creating a smooth place to travel on the bridge. Do you need more funds for the town budget? Do you need more funds for any of those options? No, uh, um, I think we'll be all set there. Um, if we do anything, if we really did decide to do a, a huge repair there, which I'm not in favor of, I would probably try to do another um, structures grant um, through the state and, and get them to help make sure. But, uh, <coughs> for right now, I, I think basically the um, steel plate that's on the bridge could actually come off and um, everything will be fine until we have a chance to pass the hole. Has anybody been underneath it to check that hole out? Um, I had an outfit in there, that's a, where this information came from. Uh, the state actually looked underneath it and um, I had another construction outfit um, that's been working on the bridge uh, look at it too. And, that's uh, the general consensus of them was uh, it's good for now. Okay. Thank you. Any, uh, any more questions, comments on the uh, budget? Yes, sir. I mean, I was going to make a motion or not. Should we move to add $8,000 to the budget for charitable control? However, it's got to be used. And then we can proceed on that rather than when you got another year as far as to. I'll make the motion to add eight thousand dollars to the budget for sure. Okay. Well, listen, yeah, um, 
how the shirt will is the problem. But how can we increase a budget that we are not sure of? It sounds like we're saying we need more study. What was the con you heard? I've heard that everyone agrees that there's probably need for a second mowing, but we're not sure exactly when. When or, or how to deal with it. And that's what I heard. But I think, I think either way, we feel that there is a problem that needs to be addressed and some funds could help us all in the long run. I'm not hearing anyone saying that not having an additional money to deal with this problem would not be worthwhile, unless that's what you're saying. Well, no, it definitely is a problem. It's all over the place. Uh, I did, I, my, but I interpret things differently, I suppose. But uh, I, I heard that people aren't sure uh, what to do. Well, some well, people would have raised a question about it, you know, studying it and coming up with a, uh, some sort of a remedy. Um, so, we're going to basically, you have $8,000 going to get in, and what are you going to achieve? We don't know. Well, if you have $8,000, we're going to have to spend it. We're not going to have to spend the money. Without 
add in a second mold, but it would be up to the contractor to have to have the equipment clean so he's not spreading it around town. Everybody's going to have to learn to bend over and pull roots <laughs>
different colors, sharp, sharp, like these. It's an attempt to get the damn thing behind. Go ahead. Was it an unusual year because the taxes were screwed up? Is that why? So could there be some kind of, um, when it's wrong, then that would be a different type of situation where you wouldn't be penalized? Because you're waiting to see if there's going to be less due? I mean, could there be some type of a stipulation for that? Because that was a big deal. Yeah. Well, a lot some of people chose not to pay their taxes at all until they got the real bill. Yeah. Yeah. It's best, best. Yeah. Right, but I, I mean, if that so happens I again. But we didn't know how much. So I'm speaking personally. I think that the August 15th, even though they were wrong, I made my payment knowing full well my second one could be reduced or not. It still was an obligation to pay it. Do and it still helps with cash flow for the town. So, you know, to me, that I, I like the incentive personally. I did the same thing. It's amazing. We're single one. There you go. There's two of us. With that, just be penalizing people who are having money problems. Yeah. Okay. I don't see a reason for that. Well, you do it the other So do it at the end. Why do it twice? If somebody's struggling, then you penalize. Unfortunately, that's the way it works. What's the interest penalty? What's the interest amount that you took? It would be 1%. You also have a baby board that can be those things as well on a one on one basis. If someone is struggling with today, go on a case by case basis and ask for relief for the counties or work out. Yeah, that's what I was saying. One on one basis.
Acoustics. We have someone coming in to um, fixing this so that our meetings will be a little bit easier to hear. And so I do appreciate everyone's assistance here that um, donated. Also, the PTO has um, lots of snacks out there. And um, that money goes for field trips for the Stockbridge kids. And so that would be really good if you don't want to eat now. There's baggies, and they'll sell you some yummy stuff to take home with. Um, also, tonight is a school meeting, and um, I am just speaking on behalf of a being a community person. Um, there's going to be um, a community meeting coming up for input, and Carl's nodding his head over there. I don't mean to step on your toes or speak over you, but no. I just, um, I, this is going to be, a year that's going to make a big difference in everybody in this room. There's big money, they're looking at big money, and not just for the budget, but for improvements on buildings, or a building, or buildings in, an, in our um, partner town. Um, you got to be aware of it, because it's a big deal. And don't, don't think that it'll be taken care of and you'll be okay if you're worried about your taxes, because there's a lot of questions that you guys should ask. That's all I'm gonna say, but it's a big deal. And don't let this pass by. If you see that there's a community meeting, I really recommend you going, um, because we all need to have a voice. We could lose our school, we could, or, or there's all, so many different varieties that they're looking at, and because it is, it's a, it's a statewide problem. So we're losing, we, there's just not a lot of kids. So they're trying to figure out the best way, Carl and his, and the board are working really hard at coming up with decisions, but we all have to have a voice because it's going to be very expensive if we're not aware of what's happening. Any other things before I want to talk about number eight? I just want to know if anybody has, is there, is there going to be a rabies clinic in town this year? Yes. Yes? Okay. Do you, do you have any way? Do you have any way? Do you have any way? Two items. 
one with regard to the volunteerism. Uh, there are two seats open on the planning commission that we would like to fill, so I believe that there's one being put forward, but we're still looking for another. But also, when we did the last town plan, there was a recommendation that the town organize a conservation commission, which might be the kind of thing that people would be interested in specifically to talk about Sherville and other invasives, the park. There are a number of things that uh, could possibly be dealt with that we don't have to put on the select board. So if there's folks interested in that. The other thing I have is a question. Um, and there's a slight budget increase for able waste management this year. I'm just curious as to what other people's experience is and how they feel about the quality of service from able and whether it's going to continue to be appropriate for the town. I know that we've noticed that the service has kind of come and gone a little bit, and also because of the situation with recycling, uh, the market for recyclables going down, that even though we're paying a recycling fee, the recycling is going right in the truck with the trash. Yep. Okay. So, there's two different trucks. There were. There were. There's not anymore. So, just whether ABLE is, is actually servicing the, serving the town well or not is possibly a, a question. And, but I don't know what our other options are. When you bring it down to town, there's two trucks on Saturday morning, so there's one truck for trash and one truck for recyclables. So yeah. I don't understand what's going on with the other one. Yeah. Uh -huh. So personally, I have noticed I put my recycle out and put my garbage out and I put it in the same truck. And I watched that twice in January and I called them and I said, What's up with that? And they said, Oh, well, we separate it when we get it to wherever, blah, blah, blah. So maybe no, yes, maybe good. no, but that was a concern for me as well. Also, as a select board, we're intending to have them come in and talk to people besides that. Yes. What was that? I didn't hear you. I said the select board has already talked about it, and before we sign a contract with them, we're asking them to come in and meet with us because we have some questions and concerns. We've already notified them to come in, so they have to come in to a select board. Donna? Just to clarify, they do have a sorting. Pretty familiar with the building through business, and they love sorting. Okay, good. Was a concern for me. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Should we no longer go to the trouble of separating them out then? If they're going to put them in one truck? She just said that they sort them by the bag. Oh. My understanding is we have to put recyclables in clear bags and trash in non clear bags. So to me, that seems like it would be fairly easy for them to sort. Ours is not in any bag. Ours is just in recycling bins, and they've always come and just empty the bins. Yeah. But the trash is in bags. The trash is mostly, yeah, in bags, and 